coming to do whatever it takes to come back to our beloved. I don't know that he would say, I was only wishing that he would say, and I challenge them to get married as soon as possible, that this church will be blessed more. It is a little bit awkward for me to, to speak and then give me away the words I don't guess. You don't want to become that, right? <laughs> My wife and I have learned to love him. He's a very good young people. I just want to finish this little ones. I have a bad photo of stop noise to be getting to them when I'm a little girl. Especially that little girl that you can have and say, Pastor, please yes, you can run this one that that makes sense. Where is she? And I'm just glad that you are here. Thank you for being here. You choose to be here. My topic is how to be a good church member. You are already good. Why would I preach that? <laughs> I would be preaching if I would preach that say, Pastor, preach that to those who are not here. <laughs> Us, we are here. Don't preach that to the kind of children. We are already good. So I will not preach how to be good because you are good. Bring me back here to this church and then I'll come back and preach how to be a better church then. So what will be my topic? The topic is about you and me. Let's begin. Can you remove this uh this is uh, uh you know what when I was young every summer all boys cousins would go to the Papa Yomigo, grandfather Yomiko, up in the mountains. <coughs> yeah, all the cows and goats and the fruits we would spend for summer with Latai Monico. Do you know Monico is a good name? And after the summer in the evening. There was no TV. There was no electricity instead of this kerosene lamp. And we would go around him and he would tell us stories. <laughs> Is it still to today that grandparents would tell stories? No. Everybody would look at their cell phones and they're all in the house. They're not looking. And even in their church, some with Pastor Chris, they'd say, those who do not like the same, the same pastor will just look at them. We'll go to that watch in over. Mm -hmm. But in our time, summertime, we will go to Papa and Nico and spend almost three weeks. And every evening, we have this lab. And then he would say, once upon a time, long ago and far away, wow, are I a white boy. So imagine that you are all children today. Whether you are as young as I am, or old as you are, <laughs> think that they are all children, and I am Tata Yumiko. I am your grandfather, and I will say, come on children, come on children, once upon a time. Yes, a big boy, once upon a time, long ago and far away, there was a kingdom, sit upon a hill, imagine children, a kingdom. A castle. <laughs> Usually when you say castle, <laughs> it means there is what? A king. How I wish the lights are close to me. Wow, okay, that's okay. There was a king. And when there is a king, there is what? A queen, but the queen usually died. The queen sometimes is out of the picture. But the focus is something, my friends, because in the kingdom is the dungeon. It's the prison house for the criminals and the bad people in the kingdom. Now, children, we understand that once upon a time there was a kingdom. There was a king. There was a dungeon. Do you have to the word again? Dungeon or dungeon? Correct, thank you. There was a dungeon. Guess who was inside the dungeon? Of course, prisoner. <laughs> What kind of prisoner? <coughs> but what? I think you are wrong because this prisoner is not only good, but he is good looking. <laughs> Most prisoners are bad, ugly. Oh. But this prisoner, you would have a crush on him right now. So I said, okay. Wow. His name was what? Demetrius. Was he a bad man? Because it says, Demetrius, the kingdom's hero, slave warrior. 
Do you have a crust on him? <laughs> but of course, your boyfriend is for good looking these days, right? Oh, okay. Yeah. She has only a boyfriend. Thank you. Look at her face. It's beautiful. Look at that. The kingdom says, why is she there? Could you guess why she was there like that? Because what he tells you to tell you will not get good. See what he was in love. Is it wrong to be in love? No. No. Brother, wake up. Is it wrong to fall in love? <laughs> no, it's not good. You fall in love. That's why you are sleeping. It's okay. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> Brother, do you still have this beautiful woman? Of course. Was it wrong to fall in love with Oh, yeah. It's wrong to fall in love That's all I suggest. Ah, that's all right. Kasi natin ba ang magmahasin natin? Hindi! Oh, it's a problem! It's a problem! I'm always very good at it. What are you whispering, Brian? I love you! What are you whispering? You love you! Look at my... Look at my... Look at my... This now. So, this... How does that happen? The slave warrior was behind bars Come on, Sally. Oh, oh, are you a little bit of a singer? Oh, yeah. Why are you still a singer? And they still have the man that loved you before. Now, he's just a singer. Yes. So, is it wrong to fall in love? Hey, you have nothing to do that. Is it wrong to fall in love with that beautiful woman beside you? <laughs> so what was the crime that you <coughs> fell in love with somebody? It's somebody. But that somebody is not supposed to be loved by him. He was a slave. And he fell in love with this woman. And this woman is not a slave. She is the daughter of the king. Is it wrong to love the daughter of him? In his time, it is wrong. When you are a slave, you marry a slave. When you have the royal blood, you marry a kingly woman. But he was a slave. She should fall in love with a slave. So what was the punishment, my friends? Death. Death. But what was happening? Oh. Following the end, in this Colosseum, the whole population of the kingdom will be there at no time. In that kingdom, there are two doors. Door A and door B. What were inside those doors? One door, one door has a, has a lady sleep, a beautiful, safe lady sleep. The other door has mm -hmm. a tiger. And on that following day, Demetrius, before the whole population, before the king and his sister, he would open one of the doors. Which door he would open? If perchance he would open the first door and the tiger would come out because the tiger has not eaten for five days, he would be devoured by the tiger. Perchance when he opened the door, the beautiful lady would come out. There is only a phrase ready to solemnize the wedding. Mm. Wow. Are you ready, Sally? Mm -hmm. I forgot the name of the phrase. Sean. Sean, are you ready to open the door? <laughs> when you open the door, there is no Sally, it's the tiger would be eating. You were the princess. <laughs> Who do you wish to come out from either of the soul? The lady or the tiger? <laughs> if it is the lady, what why? Why? She would be ready to be the by the priest. You would lose your boyfriend. But if you would open, he would open a little. It would be the tiger. Goodbye, the Demetrius. You become a big state. What a man's state. Either way, it's a dilemma. We have only one choice. So my friends, that evening, 
The princess with this maid disguised and went to the country. Every man has a price. Two hundred dollars to carry it to the Think of the gold. Excuse me. Do you know where where the tiger is? Do you know where the lady is? And the there's a it's a price, it's right. <laughs> Sorry? If the price is right. How much do you want? And before him there was the tinkling of gold. Every man has a price. And he whispered to the princess. He said, the lady is the lady. How would I tell the news? Bring a rose. Where is the rose? Where is the rose? What happened to What is the lady or the lady? <laughs> what happened to this? He told the man to go to the interest and said, When the trumpet would sound, when you see the hand of the princess holding to the right, meaning holding the rose in the right hand, open the door to your right. If the princess holds the rose with her left hand, open the door to your if you were the princess, who would you tell? Which story would you tell to the Jews? The lady or the lady? Tiger. You would lose your life. You are a very possessive, you are a very possessive wife to me. That's right. That's your choice. Okay, my friends. That's the rose. The people were there. Ready to see the final thing. Is it the lady? What happened to this? Why is it uh, very slow? Is it the lady or the tiger? My friends, when they opened the door, something came out from the door. The lady spirited. The women moved. Because when he opened the door, excuse me, according to my research, what is an instinct? Forget about the title. Instinct is the animalistic impulse or drive to do without any rational thinking of the consequences as long as the fitness first is achieved. These are our cousins. <laughs> and when you go to the zone, no. Monkeys will say, we can sit from about there. No. But people to the same, we are cousins. No. We are not. And these creatures, God created, is what we call their instinct driven behavior. Instinct. The animalistic impulse that animals were given by God so that we can propagate without thinking about who would be their partners. Do you tell the sister, hey, you go with that hand? No. Because we are living with instinct. But, my, but because of this, oh, because of sin, sometimes some people are driven with instinct. Look at this woman. He does not look like a woman already. He looks like a tiger. <laughs> wives? <laughs> Excuse me, wives. <laughs> Have you sometimes? <laughs> Behave like a tiger. <laughs> Look at the tiger fat. And when you say to your friend, why did you come on me? Yeah. <laughs> and that's not saying, excuse me, I'm not going to eat. Why? We are driven by anger. We are driven by rage. People are killed in the freeway. People are being shot anywhere. The latest news is a man was fired from his office for the sword. And he went to his workplace and shed the supervisor of that time. <coughs> wow. He was driven by what? 
He was just giving the kids there, my friends. But we are expected to act with wisdom, living people, because of two things. Number one, the Lord created us in the image of God. Could you, could you adjust this so that it will be a little shorter? More? Okay. We are created in the image of God. Therefore, we should act. We should act. We should act, my friends. Never mind what happens to the way, right? As, uh, because we are given them. And then second one, my friends. Because God has given us what? Why did we come to this church today? Is there a young man in this church? Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. There are many more beautiful men in the church. It's a good church. Nobody wants to, right? Why did you choose the beautiful lady? There are more beautiful Miss Black American. And then why did you choose them? One another. Would you not love the other one? Probably not. Probably not. Excuse me. Be careful with the other one. Wait for me to come. Your choice among the many beautiful ladies in America. Why did you choose that to be? Who chose it? You force? There's a body. You force it. Six and 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 six We are full because of our power. <coughs> I had this beautiful lady because she has a beautiful pink hair. <laughs> she chose it her choice. She was not told it is choice. We should respect her. Why did you have a blonde kind of thing? Is that your your natural hair? Oh no, where did you get it? <laughs> oh everywhere, right? It's your choice. So we are here. And we should respect its other's choices because God is a democratic God. <laughs> Friends, God is respecting our choices. He will not force us. Thank you for being here and thank you for becoming a seventh day Adventist. Amen. What is power of choice? I will read it. The right of a person to make his own choices, except where such act may prevent others from exercising their own freedoms or put oneself or others in danger. So you understand? Yeah. So what is the power of choice? We don't play scripture. You were forced to learn. I want you to be a lawyer, 
But the moment I heard a sermon from Pastor Harry, he told me you should be a minister. The word should. No, I want to be a woman. But then the Holy Spirit touched my heart. And I became a pastor. <coughs> I wanted to have another choice, but somebody suggested that I would be a pastor. He said, if you become a politician like your uncle, you might be up here on the top, but when the other party will be defeated, you'll be out of the job. They are called political assignments. So here, you wish for yourself all to be in line with God's will. You know your desires are in line with God's will, when you don't have to chase after anything you want without Him. If you seek Him, blessing will chase you down and overtake you just by your obedience to God. Wow. The blessings will chase you. Sir, you have a good soul, by the way. Can you please that? We have the same. Look at us. Strive, strive, the great eyes. But look at us. Who told you to learn this one? You want it? Your choice. Okay, it's a tiny choice. Okay, it's a tiny choice. Wow, that is a choice. Next one, whom you dream to marry. Wow. Do you still want to marry my dear? If you're a person, I feel as if I love you, so I'm not saying it. No, I'm not saying it. I still do not say it. Do not pay for your choice, it's my dear. I will just stop there. <laughs> Choice wisely for your future. That person could build you up or break you down, correct? That means some of you, your husband's no longer here. You break him up. Or you break or him. So be careful with this. When deciding who to marry, find someone with spiritual passions who loves Jesus more than you. Whose dreams and goals continue to dreams and goals and who is consistent in his relationship with God. If you want brother your son, the boy, if you want to have a good wife, give it from the woman. Do not ask your mama, because your mama will give you another woman. Come to my house and bring from the door to the night. You will see the ideal wife to be. Amen. Now, those of you who want to be a good husband, like this man, are you a good husband, sir? No. Oh, no, sir, you're not a good husband. Okay, do not follow him. <laughs> if you have to be a good husband, read Proverbs 22 29. What a blessing. Now, those of you who have married, not read any more this. Not read any more this. Okay, you, okay, you want to be a father of 31. Okay. okay, my friends. But remember, whom you get to marry is a big and big decision. And the third one, whom you will ultimately serve. Who are you going to serve? Are you going to serve worldly things like money, power, and possessions? Or are you going to serve God who floods you so much by giving his son Jesus to save you? For what shall it profit a man if you have given the whole world a new system? Some of our brilliance are not here because they are pursuing business here. We have friends in the public. I want to be a rich man, so you became a millionaire. But with the time that he was up, up in the tower, in the sector in Florida, you still remember that there was a big crash in the market? When he was looking at the window, somebody jumped. A Filipino who became a millionaire overnight by crash. Even some pastors who were involved in speculations and stock markets. Somebody said, Pastor, I have already 150,000. Today, zero. Because in stock markets, speculation, you could be a millionaire overnight. But when something is thrown down, you go. He wanted to jump also because last night he was a millionaire to pay his bankrupt. What is left is his wife's dead. His poor woman was gone. Everything was gone. He wanted to jump. But as he put his foot on the south of the window, he remembered. There is God. Okay. Amen. Whenever we are at last break, my friends, don't jump. Don't leave your wife. Don't leave your husband. Don't leave your husband. Be consistent. Just trust the Lord and He will give you a path to go. Amen. Now, these are hard questions. Five minutes. <laughs> Answer these questions before making a major choice in your life. Number one, what is driving my choice, mind or heart? 
I love you with all my heart. Excuse me? And so I ask. Ma'am, if your husband said, I love you with all my heart, my mind, would you accept it? No. What if I say, I love you with all my heart? I did. <laughs> Friends, remember this. God gave us both analytical thought and intellectualism. Both are used in making a choice, but with our emotions, <coughs> with our hearts, take over in decision making, we do not think clearly. I fell in love. When you fell in love, you got busy. Okay? <laughs> we cannot truly trust our hearts. God says the heart is deceitful. <laughs> so, ma'am, thank you when you said, I did with all my heart. But, my friends, when we only trust our hearts to make a decision, something will happen. You cannot think well. And then when you get back to say, oh, oh, I thought your nose is like this, not your nose is like oh, I thought you were this. So, what is driving my choice? Mind or heart? Next one. What the choice is? Will it affect others? Every choice a person makes, Large or small will have an effect or effects on another person. Would you agree with this, my friends? Yes. Lives are utilized in hundreds of different ways. And there is no way to escape the influence one does not others. Paul was saying, for none of us lives for ourselves alone, and none of us dies for ourselves alone. What happened to David? He was supposed to go to war, but he stayed in his bathroom and was sick in his father's company. He might have finished. Was it true for him to have a power? Did he plan to commit sin that afternoon? Did he plan? And then I was sitting in a white vision, Starbucks talking about every day. There was a small school, and then looked at there was a beautiful woman. Did Bugs him up to her? Did he plan that afternoon? Maybe. But there I think you have a device that I wish you could be That's not Men will use only that. Men will use only that. But they can't do it. The Bible will not say it, so we have to erase your device that I wish you. <laughs> and so what happened? First look was excusable perhaps, but he lingered. <clears throat> he lingered. So when we linger, he committed sin, and the rest is sin. Because you, he, while he was committing that act, he also added one more act to make a double act. What happened? Murder. So his sinful act was covered. But then, one afternoon, he got a text from his cell <coughs> It might have been mentioned in the sermon. It might have been mentioned. Don't be erased, you know. So, my friends are. And then there was another, the Lord was the prophet, who was not the prophet. And they said there, were, there was a man who had so many sheep, but he took one sheep. That man should die. Who is that man? David is Richard, I'm going to give a man who took advantage of a poor person. Who is a man? Thou art a man. And the rest is it. But what happened? The son of Absalom. They were straight against him. And he was very out of the church. Ladies and gentlemen, please other parents, let us be careful in making decisions. For our own decisions could have a filter into the lives of our children. I am saying this because I am a wounded pastor. Some of my decisions are not good, and some of my family members are affected. We would be affected, he would be affected, because sin is poison. It could, it could filter into the lives of our children. A pastor's daughter was getting married. He said, I'm not going to marry as an artist. Because my boyfriend had been tested with me while I was taking mercy, he was also gallivanting with other women. I will not marry a 70 Adventist. Friends, what could the pastor do? Because once upon a time, the pastor.
also to the Son of God. God did not punish them, he punished them for his children. David was not punished by the Lord because he didn't get that, but what happened to the son or the, guy, the child of the person. It was an innocent effort, but when we do something wrong, even innocent people are becoming things. <clears throat> it's already 12. May the honor God for this Christian. As Adventist Christians, we are a living Bible as well as representatives of Jesus with skin on for the world to say. We can either choose to be salt and the light of the world or bring disgrace and shame our life. Good decisions honor God and bless us. Bad decisions dishonor God and the soul is said that lifetime is not right. So today, if some of you are still having that sin because you made a wrong decision, stop it. Move on and make decision, the bad decision into the right decision. Women, when you look at this, the glass this morning, you know it says, when you get what you want at the end of the day, and the world makes you the star for a day, just look at the mirror and look at yourself and see what that woman in the glass has to say. It is also a man talking like this, but for women also. So when women, when you go like this, what this like this, you look so beautiful. Ah, what does the glass say to you? When you get what you want, what do you want? Say, you may fool the whole world down the pathway of life and get acts on your back as you pass away, but your final reward will be heartache and tears if you have cheated the woman in the past. It could be me cheating the woman, the man in the Because even if our husbands or wives do not know what they're doing, when you look at the glass, the glass says, Here is your own. The glass will point to you to the state. But my friends, there is hope. Because the Bible says, when there is repentance, forgiveness follows. Yeah. Well, a lot of people miss this today. There is what? There is hope. Yeah. Why? We made some bad decisions. When Adam and Eve made some bad decisions, Jesus yeah. has the sake of the woman. And today we are blessed because he who believes in Jesus Christ, he will be saved. Yeah. And then in Proverbs 20, 13, he who covers his sins will not prosper. But whoever confesses and forsakes them will have mercy. Ladies and gentlemen, praise the Lord. I have committed sin, you have committed sin. We will repent, God will forgive us. And he said, I will abundantly, I am And I will cast your sins into the depths of the sea. And I will remember them no more. Praise the Lord, my friend. Amen. Your pastor, Pastor Terry, this is serious. All of us have committed sins before the Lord. But what a promise. He will pardon his sir. He will pardon his sir. And put our sins into the depth of the sea. And he will remember them all. And he will put a big sign. Because Satan is like a man. <laughs> the sign is no fishing. No fishing. Why? Because I repeat it. Amen. Read the past choices. We cannot change the past. But we can influence the future. Our future will depend upon the choices we make from this moment forward. That's the Bible. Even if we made bad choices in the past, God forgives us and gives us the opportunity to make better choices for our future. Do you believe in that, my friends? Mm -hmm. Last, please give me one five minutes. Do you know this? <coughs> he was 18 years old. He was sitting in a church, not other church. After his time, a gentleman came to him and said, Yeah, man, you come to my office tomorrow morning, Monday, with this car. When you look at this car, what was the name of the car? MGM Studios. Mm -hmm. Me, yes. Owner of the name. When you went to the office, there were people in that big room, both of them person, that MGM people. Some of them were doing near every example. Yeah, man, we need to, we, we, we want to become a singer like Sinatra. Mm. Like the singers. Why do you think? <coughs> if you sign this number, here is the key to the catalog. <coughs> do you want to buy a catalog? Mm. No, I don't. Do you want to sing? Okay. <laughs> Well, just sign this. You'll be like Francis Like you like Michael Watson. 
you'll be happy. Because we have your voice. He went to Mama. And my mom. <coughs> the name is George. George, it's up to you. You own your tomorrows. You own your destiny. But remember, God in your decision. So in the five days he was struggling, shall I go to him by being just an ordinary guy or be like Francis Man? And then the decision came. He went up to the next Monday. And there he was, making the board of the of the MGM calling. And then he said, Sir, I have come to my decision. And he was handed the key. He said, No, that's it, sir. I will just send my decision. You will send your decision? Yes. And he went to the piano. And guess what he said? Sorry, sorry, it's the Sabbath school. What was that story that you stuck the Sabbath school? My brother of Jesus. He sang the song. So, who is the pianist now? So, people say, the song that we sang, would you please What is the name? What is the face? I am I am not He stood before this world of directors of the MGM and he sang the song. I got it. What is that? 327. 327. He said, I'd rather know Jesus than serve the Lord. I'd rather be this than have riches and gold. I'd rather know Jesus than houses of land. I'd rather be led by this. This is the answer of what is the name? His name is George. Who George is? George Beverly Shea. So, tell us that. Tell us that.